Welcome to DC2B Revolution, helping chiropractic students think big in order to live large. I'm your host, Noah Voles, and today I'm here with Dr. Stephen Perlstein. He's a DC and an APC, and he's been practicing chiropractic medicine for the past 36 years. He's been instrumental in creating the advanced practice laws in New Mexico, and is currently president of the Academy of Advanced Practice Chiropractic Medicine. Uh, Dr. Perlstein, thanks so much for being here. Uh, it is absolutely my pleasure, and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really great to have you on. I know uh, a lot of they don't fully understand it, and um, so I wanted to kind of start with uh, the confusion that seems to be out there in terms of what chiropractors actually do and what their qualifications are. And uh, I wonder where the advanced practice of chiropractic medicine, that organization, fits into that whole spectrum of chiropractors' credibility. Sure. Well, AAPCM, or Academy of Advanced Practice Chiropractic Medicine, was created around 2014. And the reason that it was created is because myself and others believed that in order to um, in order to promote the practice beyond typical scopes in all states for chiropractic, to move into arenas that chiropractors usually are not involved in, I figured there's got to be a voice for that. And I also figured that there were a lot of chiropractors out there who really didn't have that voice, didn't really know where to turn. And in this process, I did come across many chiropractors who just really didn't know where to turn, didn't know who to speak to, didn't have a voice for them. They would like to expand their scope, but there was nothing that they could see or turn to. So we created AAPCM. And so AAPCM, as it says on its website, is a clearinghouse for information, all information related to advanced practice. AAPCM does not have an agenda. We don't go into a state and tell it what it wants to do. But we're here to provide the resources for any state that wants to expand their scope. Now, as you said, that there's, there's confusion. Um, what chiropractors can do, what their qualifications are. Essentially, this is a grassroots campaign, if you will. Um, as you mentioned in the intro, I've been a chiropractor for 36 years. And in that time, I've seen chiropractic move to the left, move to the right, move up and down, go every which way. And it's my opinion that chiropractic is trying to create an identity. Now, there are those who say that chiropractic already has an identity, and what I'm doing is messing with that identity. Well, I'm comfortable with the fact that chiropractic can be an evolving art and science in which it explores ways of being outside of the traditional scope. I think we all recognize that the chiropractic profession is not necessarily thriving. And AAPCM represents that organization that says, well, what is the possibility of chiropractic? Could it go beyond the traditional boundaries? To some, that's very confusing. And when I started chiropractic, that was very confusing to me. And I remember early on in the 80s, there was talk about scope expansion, and that quickly got smashed. Well, in the last 10 years, there has been some distinct changes in scopes across the country. Very few, but it's a ground level grassroots movement by those who say, you know what, if you want to practice traditional chiropractic, we love you. Go ahead and do it. We have no problem with it. But we want to expand. We want to explore what's possible in chiropractic without giving up what chiropractic is. And that's what we're doing. So to me, it's not confusing. To me, it's exciting. To others, it's very confusing and unsettling. And this is where I think chiropractic is right now. Those who don't want to go in the direction that AAPCM is bringing the chiropractic profession wish I would just go away. But you know what? We're just getting stronger. 
Well, yeah, and that's why I'm really glad that you're on the show and that we're having this conversation because, um, you know, regardless of whether you're behind scope expansion or you're not behind scope expansion, it's important to have the conversation and look at what scope expansion could do for the profession as a whole and how it may or may not help the identity of the profession, um, you know, how it, and so, uh, you know, can we talk a little bit about, um, you know, the initiatives that you've been working on in terms of scope expansion uh, and, you know, the results that you've had so far and how uh, chiropractors are responding to those results? Yeah, let me give you some background. Um, New Mexico is the first state to legislate scope expansion. And let's define what scope expansion is. We are talking gasp pharmaceuticals. And I know that to a traditional chiropractor or a traditional chiropractic student, that's somewhat blasphemous to bring drugs into the picture. I remember when I was a student, I heard that and I thought that's terrible because what makes chiropractic distinct is that we don't utilize drugs in our profession. I don't believe that anymore. So what we did in New Mexico we decided, well, actually one of the initial impetuses, impeti, <laughs> I don't know which one the word is, one of the original reasons we created the laws that we created was because there was talk about the government um, taking vitamins and supplements and making them prescription only. And the only ones that people could buy were of such a low dosage that it would force uh, the public to go to doctors to get their vitamins and supplements. Now that hasn't come out, ha hasn't happened yet, but there's been recent talk about that. And this is more than 10 years ago that I first heard about this. So we figured, you know what, we have to get into the pharmacy acts in New Mexico. And the pharmacy acts are where those professions are named that are eligible to have some level of prescriptive authority. And then we took it a little further. For me personally, it was about homeopathics, actually. I had no idea, and I'm not a homeopath, but I had no idea that homeopathics were also available as injectable substances. And I was using Tramil a lot, which you don't see on the market anymore as a mainstream, oint, mainstream ointment because it's now a prescriptive product. Uh-oh. And you can only get it if you have prescriptive authority. So there's the first. Now, that's not that situation I explained, that has some other reason why it's prescription. But that's a wonderful product, and now it's prescription only. Um, because I'm a chiropractor who's part of the Pharmacy Acts in New Mexico, I can order that, and I can sell that. So we decided that, well, for me personally, the thought that I could introduce a homeopathic into the body through a needle that would take it exactly where it needed to go, and an entire science called prolotherapy, or also biopuncture, emerged over 60 years ago um, that actually does that, some with homeopathics and some with other substances. But that just got me very excited. Now, I want to say I'm a chiropractor first, but I don't have any problem bringing in something that is not traditionally chiropractic and not giving up the profession of chiropractic, but just using another method, another modality to influence the value of the adjustment. Now, I actually forgot what your question was, and I'm, I'm prone to just ramble on, so I don't even know if I've answered your question. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm getting your question answered. Yeah, so we, you were talking uh, specifically about what scope expansion is and that scope expansion really is the use of pharmaceuticals um, by chiropractors. Um, so, you know, and of course you address the fact that most... Noah, I need to interrupt you because I want to make a very important distinction. I did say that scope expansion involves pharmaceuticals. I'm not sure the word that I said. But it also does not, because Idaho, this past year, that enables them to do IV nutritional uh, uh, treatment. So that's not using legend drugs, and that's not necessarily pharmaceuticals. So I should really redefine scope expansion. It's what's beyond traditional chiropractic, and it involves 
pharmaceuticals, but it also involves uh, use of vitamins and supplements, uh, specifically with some states, in an intravenous manner. Yeah, so why is it that you feel like uh, it's necessary for chiropractors to uh, expand their scope, so to speak. You know, uh, you kind of alluded to this earlier. Um, I've definitely experienced this in chiropractic school that maybe the opportunities that are out there are, are not as uh, wonderful as they possibly could be. So where does, where does scope expansion fit into that? And what problem is it really, uh, you know, positioned to solve? That's a really good question. And, and there's facets to that question. Um, every state, every chiropractor needs to decide where they stand on this issue. I think scope expansion is important. To say that it's necessary is to take it into another realm. And I do think it's necessary, given the fact that I see chiropractic moving in that direction. And I see ultimately that even though I've got plenty of room for chiropractors who do not want to do any of this to exist and be happy with what they do, I do see the future of the profession as being expanded beyond the boundaries that it is now. Why? To give patients more of an opportunity and also to be recognized, not necessarily as primary care physicians, but to be recognized for more of what we do. I do believe that chiropractic without any type of expansion limits us, and I know that there are advocates of limiting chiropractic. In fact, to them, chiropractic is not limited. That's the whole of chiropractic. But I, given my experience of 10 years working with patients as a chiropractor and also providing pharmaceutical intervention and therapies like prolotherapy, I see that chiropractic can exist with that and not lose its identity. I think that, let me explain, in 10 years, not one patient has said when I have provided a muscle relaxant for sleeping, when somebody has a tremendous amount of pain, a muscle relaxant prescribed for just a few days, no one has said, well, wait a minute, you're a chiropractor, you're not allowed to do that, I'm leaving, this is terrible, you don't belong in this realm, no, that's wrong. No one says that. And so my experience is that patients want what they want and they need what they need. And chiropractic is magnificent with pain management. But I have also experienced where chiropractic does not fill the entire bill. And so I am, I'm able to add to that, and it, which actually enhances the value of the adjustment, the adjustment to me being number one. So I see the necessity for scope as expanding our profession, making our profession even better. And I know that there are those who think I'm making the profession even worse. I do think that where we are right now is like an identity crisis. We've got one side pulling one way, one side pulling the other way. And that's a very dynamic type of thing. The public doesn't know about it, but I think that they sense it and they stay away. They're very unsure what chiropractic is. So I'm in the vanguard of moving it in one direction. And I know that upsets many people, but the patients love it. They really do. And again, I always like to emphasize this. I'm a chiropractor first. That's first and foremost. Yeah, I, you know, I really like how you've kind of uh, talked about the pharmaceuticals as another modality that you utilize. And like all chiropractors, your primary focus is using you know conservative care using natural treatments whenever they're available to really um support that patient to get well as quickly as possible and so you've brought in this other modality you've you know been doing it for a significant period of time and seen how that's able to help you um i know there's probably concerns i, I mean i'm in school so in terms of education i would imagine that an initiative like this would change the education landscape and, um, you know, could be good or bad. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the, the educational components to this program and how it may affect education long-term? Sure. Well, chiropractic education is chiropractic education 
fairly standardized amongst all chiropractic schools. And that's still where it is right now. In New Mexico, when we created the bill that became law, we included what we considered to be adequate education in order to be able to um, prescribe a limited formulary of pharmaceuticals and also to perform certain injection procedures with homeopathics. And that was about 100 hours of pharmacology, toxicology, pharmacognosy, natural medicine. We created that and we came up with nine modules and we were taught um, three modules. Uh, the, the sponsoring colleges were Texas Chiropractic College and National University. These were excellent courses. We also had some clinical workshops so that we could be introduced to um, treatment with syringes and needles and how to deal with that kind of thing, which was very interesting in the beginning because it was so foreign. Um, so we created that education and that went through in New Mexico. In Idaho, they're able to do IV therapy. In Oklahoma, they're able to do IV therapy and they have their own set of, um, set of educational requirements. So each state at this point, if they wanted to expand their scope, they'd have to decide what they wanted to expand into and then devise the education for it. Right now, there is no standardized education to expand into. And as I mentioned earlier, we're really on the ground floor and it's a really grassroots movement. But I can tell you that there are colleges, chiropractic colleges, who are involved in advanced practice. National University has a master's program in, uh, it, it, I guess you'd call it advanced clinical practice. And actually in New Mexico, because we sunset our educational requirements in 2012, in order to practice in New Mexico as an advanced practice certified chiropractor, you'd have to now go through that master's program, a two-year master's program. Um, so it's a little here and a little there. It's, it's, it's not standardized, but what you're gonna see eventually, and I don't know how long it's gonna take, is that the colleges that are open to this are going to expand their curriculum so that the product that comes out of a chiropractic college for certain schools will be somebody who is advanced practice, who has the knowledge and the skills, and who has had clinical rotations in order to be able to prescribe a particular limit formulary. And I can't speak of what that would be, but this is how it's going to evolve in the schools. This is what I say, is gonna happen from all of the work that I've been doing involved with particular schools who are open to expansion. And I think when that starts to happen, the pull is gonna get stronger to move in that direction. That's how, how I see it right now. So there is no, there is no, hey, I'm a chiropractor, how, how do I do this? Where do I get the education? No, it's not like that. You know, it's state by state right now. And eventually it will be standardized, but I'll probably be gone by then. You know, I think it's going to take some time. Well, we'll keep you around as long as we can. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> so, you know, um, as you talk about the, the schools getting involved and, and some uh, curriculum changes, um, I'm wondering about how, you know, what your vision is in terms of chiropractors comparing to nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, um, other uh, medical professionals who provide services within that kind of, gen you know, within a similar scope to that. Where, where do you see chiropractors fitting into that, interfacing with that? And what, what do you see as kind of the, the, the differences between those camps? Well, that is actually, I think, a bigger question than um, the question seems on the surface. And what I mean by that is, unfortunately, all of these different professions, the ones you've mentioned, plus chiropractic, plus advanced practice chiropractic, expanded scope, it's like apples and oranges. It's very, very difficult to compare them. 
When we went recently into the legislature to try to expand our legislative scope, which we were not successful with, we, we, we tried to make a point that what we're trying to do is like what the nurse practitioners have done. Now, when you get into the politics of this, and this is where it gets gnarly, even though there are nurse practitioners, and nurse practitioners have full prescriptive authority, there are states that do not have any nurse practitioners, just as there are naturopaths in Arizona that have full prescriptive authority, and in New Mexico, there's not even a law for naturopaths. So we still have this situation, this world situation, where we've got PAs who can do things, who have, in my opinion, much less of an education than a chiropractor does, but a chiropractor can only do one thing and one thing only. That's historic and that's legislated. So it really is difficult to compare and legislatures don't like to compare it. And the problem with it is, is that a nurse practitioner and a physician's assistant exist within a particular box. They're in a particular paradigm and that's the medical paradigm. So there's an acceptance by the ruling authority that these guys are okay. Even though if we go down into another level of politics, there's many medical doctors who would like to stop this nurse practitioner nonsense. And that's true. They would like, they do not like it. They do not like it at all. So you've got a situation where it's really, it, it's, we can't really compare. What is our education compared to a nurse? You really can't compare it because the settings that they work in and the training that they have, it's, it's in a totally different paradigm. We are going to, we are creating, in my opinion, a new paradigm for chiropractic. And that's actually what matters. Um, we are not trying to become medical doctors. That's a very very important distinction. It looks like it. From the position of a straight, boy, does it look like it. You're selling out. No, I fully believe that chiropractors can expand their scope, can move into pharmaceuticals to whatever extent, and the job at hand is to still be a chiropractor, to have chiropractor be, chiropractic be the number one treatment and everything else modalities, everything else be an expansion of basic chiropractic, something else that you're able to do to help the patient. So this is a paradigm I'm speaking of, a point of view. And when I speak of it in that way, it becomes really impossible to compare the professions because we're comparing paradigms and they don't necessarily compare. I think there's room for everybody. I want to make also one mention. There are chiropractors who don't adjust. You may or may not be aware of that, I'm not like calling people out or saying they're wrong, but there are chiropractors who've gone into functional medicine, rightfully so, their scope of practice allows for it, and they really don't care to adjust anymore. Is that wrong? Is that right? It, it just depends on how you look at it. So the fact that there are chiropractors who don't adjust, well, <clears throat> there's a fear that chiropractors with prescriptive authority are no longer going to adjust, and they're going to be medical doctors, they're going to be nurse practitioners, they're just going to be doing pharmaceuticals. Can that happen? Yes, it can. But it depends on the profession to make sure that it doesn't. So I'm over here. I'm not going to last forever. But I am sort of one of those at the head of this movement. And I say as long as I'm here, I will continue to speak of chiropractic as being number one and as any kind of pharmaceutical intervention that we may do with proper education, as a modality, as another way of helping the patient when appropriate, but chiropractic is number one. That was a long answer. <laughs> no, but that was a great answer. And, and, and really, um, you know, part of what I pulled from that, which I think is really important, is uh, how different the paradigms are uh, if you're, and it's all medicine, but if you're a medical doctor, as opposed to if you're a chiropractor. And even if you're a chiropractor with prescriptive rights, the paradigm that you're using is completely different than the medical doctor 
who's prescribing. Um, you know, and like you mentioned, even if you're a functional medicine chiropractor and you don't even adjust anymore, the way that you see the body and the way that you interface with the public is going to be completely different than the medical doctor, regardless of whether you have prescriptive authority. You will always be a chiropractor. You'll always be seen by the public as a chiropractor. And so, um, you know, I, I really appreciated that, that distinction. Noah, you're going to make um, a great advanced practice chiropractor because you got, oh, thank you. You got the distinction. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, like you mentioned, this is a grassroots effort. And, you know, of course, I'm a student, um, but I know that there's other students that are going to listen to this and go, oh, wait, this isn't just me being able to prescribe drugs. This is a whole paradigm shift within chiropractic of moving more towards being a, a primary care doctor and providing a, a full uh, level of care for patients as opposed to just musculoskeletal care. And of course, you're a chiropractor, you get to choose what you want to do. But for those students and other chiropractors who are interested in being part of this effort, what's the best way for them to learn more about this and get involved? Probably the best way is to go to our website. And, and aapcm.org is the website for Academy of advanced practice chiropractic medicine. There is a lot of information on there. Um, there's videos on there. There's lots of information. Uh, AAPCM also has a Facebook page, which you can take a look at. I'm very accessible. I'm available to anybody who wants to speak with me, learn more, argue with me, debate me, do whatever. You go to that website and it will tell you how to get in touch with me through the, you know, the email address that is, that goes along with um, AAPCM. I would suggest going to that website first. You can also go to the New Mexico Board of Chiropractic Examiners, look at our rules and statutes and learn for yourself exactly what the laws and rules for advanced practice is in New Mexico. I travel around the country talking with people about this. And I find that most people have no idea what we've done in New Mexico, what we're able to prescribe. Um, so you can really find that information out. It's all there online and, um, and on the AAPCM website. And like I said, I'm very accessible. You can get in touch with me and I'll talk with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and, you know, sharing this topic. I know that it's a, it's a, a very controversial topic. And so I really hope that this was able to, to bring to light, um, you know, exactly what you've been able to accomplish in New Mexico. Because uh, I, you know, like you said, and I even said it pre-roll is when you say drugs and chiropractic, like immediately your hackles go up. And so I really hope this um, flush things out more and provided more context for the work and the paradigm shift that um, you're you're bringing into fruition in your state and hopefully other states will will get involved. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stephen Perlstein, for coming on the show today. Absolutely, I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you engaging with me in this this discussion. Um, I also wanted to mention that AAPCM will have a booth at NCLC 2018 in beginning of March of this year. So if you as a student are gonna be coming out, please come over and talk to me. I'll be there, be happy to spend time with you. Uh, Noah, thank you so much. I appreciate this that you are doing. You're a student, you're already a member of the profession as far as I'm concerned. You're an honorary member <laughs> of the profession already. Uh, and, um, and, and I hope this has been informative for not only you, I know it has, but for everybody who's uh, watching, and I hope everybody who is watching this will let others know about this, because this is where you're going to find out the truth about scope expansion. So thank you yeah. again for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. You're, you're more than welcome. Um, this has been a production of DC to be Revolution helping chiropractic students think big to live large. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, leave comments in the comment section below. Uh, you know, we we'll always appreciate your support. 
And yeah, thanks for watching.